Guys, welcome. It's going to be an awesome video with a really principal man, Matthew Tissier. I've got three things I need you to do. Hit the subscribe button right now and mark always, always notify. Also, hit the like button. It helps us get uh, value for putting on interviews like this. The third thing is stay till the end of the video where we have all the key points that you must activate for yourself in reset times to ensure that you protect yourself from overreaching totalitarianism states. At the end of the video, there is a slide with bullet points and you too can register and even receive these key points for going forward in reset times. Enjoy the video and thank you for acting on those three points. Hey guys, how are you? Uh, I'm exceedingly happy to uh, corner a British footballing legend, particularly for Southampton. He's a one club man. Now for our American and our uh, other Commonwealth nations, Matt Letitia, uh was a striker for Southampton. Um, long before it was popular, he had big men. Uh, he was a big man with big feet. No giggling at the back there, girls. Uh, and he played, uh, he put in, he scored absolute worldies uh, for his club and was greatly loved and is still a legend uh, today uh, in Southampton. I've come down to his patch of the wood. But the reason is not because of such an exceptional uh, footballer, but more importantly, almost to me, uh, I think we found a man of real character who has the courage to talk truth to totalitarianism and power. And he's paid a bit of a price for that in terms of contracts with Sky and other mainstream medias, which we love to hate. Um, but I'm very glad and happy to welcome uh, Matthew Letitia. Hey, Matt, how are you? Great to see you, mate. I'm good, thanks. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of things, and we targeted this uh, sort of for the working class hero, the football fan, and also many, obviously, I would say, middle class folk as well. Um, there's something going on out there that's undercurrent, isn't there, Matt? Uh, I'm not even sure it's undercurrent anymore. I think it's, <laughs> it's very much coming to the surface every single day, um, and it's incredibly concerning, uh, I think, for, for humankind, for what's going on. Um, the lengths that governments are going to to try to stop their people from speaking truth is um, quite frightening. Um, frankly, with the with the censorship that's going on, um, I think it's incredibly concerning uh, to our way of life going yeah. forward. Um, and I think we are at a crossroads uh, in this life where this can go one of one of two directions. Um, and I think people have to understand try and understand what's going on and what their end goal is um and fight back against it and that's what i've been trying to do for the last couple of years um it, it's it's hasn't made me too many friends in the media um but quite frankly uh, i don't really care about those morally bankrupt people i love the phrase morally bankrupt um it's it's a sad fact that uh, matt is probably in my opinion in the ex-footballing world fraternity one of very few that has taken a, a moral stance uh, against us. Why? Why are the others so co-opted? Are they taking the check and foregoing morals? Um, or do they just not know? I think I, I think it's a combination of, of many things. I think a lot of people like their ignorance. Yeah. I think they're quite, it's a convenient it's ignorance. It's a convenient ignorance, but they, well. they don't have to <laughs> face what's going on because I think if they had to face it, uh, I think they would be completely overwhelmed by it, I think is, is one of the reasons. Uh, I think there are certain people in the media as well who um, who I think are, uh, you know, obviously been employed for a long time on very good money yeah. um, and don't wish to see that income stream come to an end. So it's uh, play the game. So they play the game, do what they're told. Uh, and I think there are, there are also some people in, in high profile media positions who have um, let's say, not led the purest of lives, yeah. and uh, I think are in a uh, in a position where if they're told to do something by someone, they have to do it. Otherwise, there'll be stories coming out about them that they won't want coming out. 
It's yeah, compliance via blackmail. It's funny that we seem to get a lot of it in politics as well. Uh, it's amazing how a, polit a politician starts to get a little bit independent of thought, and then the media suddenly seems to have all this information that happens to come tumbling out. It does feel like a mechanism. Uh, the audience we're speaking to, um, the people that are here because they know who Matt is, I'm going to just add a small element on us and why and what we hope to achieve with this conversation. Um, it's our overall opinion, very similar to Matt's, that there is a major, major movement towards uh, compliance at all costs, regardless of truth, uh, smearing and undermining people that speak truth to totalitarianism. And the goal I want to have out of this discussion as well, a small agenda, is for people that never thought or had these discussions before, um, the, the last part of this video uh, and content is about what you can do to push back and how you can do it. So I don't just want to do misery porn. Um, and there's a lot out there because actually that's part of what they want, don't they, Matt? Absolutely. When they you put people in fear, you actually reduce their immune system, you reduce their activity, they deer in headlines. They, absolutely. And I think demoralization is one of their, one of their biggest tactics. Um, and so I think when, uh, when you constantly talk negatively about stuff, it does, it gets people down. Uh, and you're right, it suppresses immune systems. Uh, and that is one of the ways how they try to control you. Yeah. Um, and I, I've chosen, and I've always kind of been a very positive person. I've always yeah. had a, a positive outlook on life. Uh, I've tried to uh, be a decent human being. Um, yeah. You know, that's not to say I'm perfect. You know, we've yeah. made mistakes in our lives. Um, uh, and I've happily admitted to, to ones that I've made in the past. Um, but I've chosen to try and live my life in the most positive way that I can, uh, and not just for, for my benefit, but for the benefit of the people around me, the people that I meet. So I've always tried to keep my feet on the ground, first and foremost. Yes. Um, try to be as humble uh, as, as I can possibly be. Um, but at the same time, I, I've also you know, tried to help a lot of people um, down the years, uh, I, I do a lot of stuff that people really don't know about. Um, yeah. uh, and quite frankly, I don't need them to know about it. I don't do that for, for people for to, accolades. to need to know about it. Yeah. I do it because I feel like it's the right thing to do. I've, yeah. I've been very privileged in my life. Um, I, I've led a, an incredible life as a professional sportsman uh, and as a, as a media pundit in my, my career after sport. And I've always felt, given that I've been in, a, in, in that position and incredibly fortunate that uh, I think it's only right that I should try and help people that haven't been as fortunate as me. And that's that's what I've tried to do ever since I came to Southampton in 1985. And you're fighting your biggest battle right here, right now, in my opinion, and doing a great job of it. And the great pity is you're standing alone. And for all of us to help add protection for Matt, because there's a tall poppy syndrome to those that speak truth, we actually need more to stand up. We need the power in the numbers. We need, and I'm disappointed on that side. Yeah, I should have ten people to interview. In fact, I'm thinking ex-footballers. There's one guy in the room. Um, uh, there are a few more that are perhaps not quite as high profile um, uh, as perhaps I've been over the years. Um, so there, there are people out there, uh, but it's important that we uh, we connect with each other uh, and we come together and that we have each other's backs. Um, so I have been um, involved in a, in a few groups. Um, where people of a profile uh, have got together who have the similar thoughts and have, and have been a good support to each other. Yeah. So, so that's been quite nice. Um, and it's been, uh, it's, it's actually been quite quite a nice feeling to actually connect with people who I, I've never, get it. never met before in my life, but who get it and who have the same thoughts uh, and just that, that little bit of support in the background that you know they're there, they've got your back. You know, if you start getting attacked on social media, as has happened uh, several times over the last couple of years, they're there and they're, they're fighting your corner with you. Yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, that's that's quite a lovely feeling to have. Gaslighting is an effective strategy. You really need to, need to get in a room where you actually know you're surrounded about people that are on the same page. It is refreshing and it galvanizes you again to go back out there. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I've, I've taken a, a few blows in terms of the amount of abuse that I've had on uh, through the mainstream media. Um, but I was prepared for it. I, yeah. knew, I knew it would come because basically yeah. I'm telling everybody, don't believe what you hear in the in the mainstream media because they make up a load of shit. 
they do um, uh, on, a, on a regular basis um, and so for me for, for that to be my message to people the obvious thing to happen is that those push people, the, those people who i'm telling <laughs> that they're talking a load of shit they will attack me and try to discredit me in any possible way they can because they're trying to protect their reputation um, but with a, with a large amount of people now the more people i speak to uh, on the ground um, the more i'm hearing that i don't watch the mainstream media anymore yeah yeah no i think let's talk on a couple of things just at the top line we're going to do a whole thing but we, we were talking about the gaslighting things you can do so my my medicines are music exercise outdoors sunshine uh awake and socialize people socializing in uh that environment yep. and then a very big one that's going to come and i'm going to reassert it later taking action um towards preparing for what's coming so i'm actually a futurist we look at charts and we look at a lot of things i was mentioning to matt we called the crash in the single dollar oil we're calling a euro swiss franc crash and the yen crash and there'll be reasons for that now many of you were watching this say why do i care about this this is fx currencies commodities you're a trader dude i like my football because what we're witnessing is actually a beginning of the failing of debt system this high inflation and the spike in interest rates on the on the, on the the debt. I don't want to take you out of uncomfortable waters, but how do you feel on the just a general comment on the inflation side? Um, well, obviously I, I don't understand uh, the markets in the in the way that you do. Um, however, I, I see what's going on in the world around me, and the only thing that makes sense to me with what's going on with the financials in this world is this is being done deliberately. This is a deliberate mechanism. A managed takedown. A managed takedown. And it is so obvious. Bang on. To me, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I can see this is happening on purpose. Absolutely. Because there are other ways that they could have done stuff that wouldn't have had the impact that it's having now, and they've completely ignored those other options. Uh, yeah. And so for me, the only take that I can get from that is this is being done on purpose, and that that's quite scary. Yes, it is. Um, many people don't understand the financial system. And I would like to, for those that particularly you trust Matt, uh, and I'm taking and I'm going to support him um, a little bit in taking you into an area that's maybe not uh, familiar. But uh, money is borrowed into existence. Many people, they don't, it's a very important point. Actually, we don't teach money in no, school. Do absolutely we? <laughs> not. I have no idea how the financial system worked. Um, you know, I, I mean, I didn't know until uh, perhaps a couple of years ago, that there isn't enough money in the world to actually, if everybody went to their bank and went, oh, I'd like to take all my money out. Yeah. They, they don't actually have that amount of money to give to everybody. Yeah. No, no, it's unbacked. Uh, actual current, yeah, there is <laughs> nothing, nothing to back. And it's just like, well, this is like some kind of Ponzi scheme. Yeah, we, we refer to it the, as fiat. Uh, almost, it's a, I consider that a disparaging term in the same way they would consider a conspiracy theory uh, a theorist as a disparaging term. Uh, I think the one's far more honorable and uh, fiat is essentially Latin for faith-based system. Yeah. So the faith-based system is, as long as we all keep believing, the Ponzi keeps proliferating. Um, the first, say you were the starting a financial system and you borrow into existence 10 million, many of people that did accountancy will know there's an asset and a liability. So you have nothing, and then suddenly you have 10 million with a contract of say, let's say 10% to pay it back, which is ursuary system. That means you actually need to continue to proliferate because there's clearly not enough money to pay the 10% back. So as money is borrowed into existence, you have to keep proliferating. So it's, it's this expanding it's universe. And at some point it goes pop. That's the big thing. So every fiat system is destined to fail because inherently we're participating in an expanding universe. And that's why interest rates have been trending down. People haven't noticed it. You know, the last UK uh, bust, the George Soros of property, home market, rates spiked, I think, to 15% for a short period. But they were always at about five or six. Uh, that's the central bank yeah. rate and you were paying seven or eight if you had a mortgage or and if yeah. you have a credit card most people are on 29 percent if they, you know they're not at the best credit rating and this is a nursery extracting uh, system so if it keeps expanding eventually you get so much of it uh, that the interest rates have to go down for the Ponzi to be sustained because the people paying the interest can't afford to pay anything but a low rate. And then eventually you go from, in, many people don't understand this inflation. The, the central bankers are saying we couldn't create inflation. We could, this, I'm talking three or four or five years ago now. They're not saying that today. 
And actually, all they were doing was creating so much money that you were getting inflation. But what many people don't understand is it goes into assets first. You get hyperinflation in assets. You have, after this 30% crash on the NASDAQ, it is still just at percentage of the market cap of all the tech stocks is at the dot-com high relative to GDP. So it's so far overshot that even with this correction, you're at dot-com boom levels. This is the proliferation of money. So we've had huge inflation, but first it went into Apple, uh, all the tech stocks, and then it's trickled down into uh, other things like vehicles, cars. We all got great cars and housing here in the UK. I'm in St. Albans, Hertfordshire, and I can imagine what the prices are down here. But my old ex-council house is now a 550 grand home. <laughs> it's just crazy. But How's it down here? I'm sure I you've mean, seen the, the same. Prices are crazy, yeah. Crackers, even you know, back in my back in my homeland in Guernsey, um, they are just through the roof. Yeah. And you just look at the house, you just think, how? How can that be worth that much money? No. It doesn't make sense. And that is the fiat proliferation. It's the diminishment of borrowing power. And that and they were able with the great globalization, everything China, to actually keep asset inflating without it being spotted, because we were now sending kids in India uh, who shouldn't be working and should be in schools, making your Adidas uh, football, your soccer boots. And of course, the cost went down. The companies made super normal profits. Uh, the globalization gave you this Goldilocks effect as Greenspan uh, did it. And like day, there's always a night. Now we're deglobalizing because Russia bad, because you know we flipped their, a Ukrainian friendly leader to Russia with a five billion payment, and now they're a bit upset about that. Uh, so Russia's bad, we, and now Germany doesn't have gas. They're preparing for cuts uh, in, in gas supply. I saw that. I saw that. You know, it, I mean, they've put themselves in a very compromised position with their with their gas supplies. It's uh, it's just it's just bizarre, and and they were warned about it. And, and, and ignored it. Well, that's the key about the engineered takedown. You're busy validating it right there because you rely on this huge provider who's on your doorstep, who's been pumping it to you cheap for a reasonable amount, happy to earn euros. And now actually the ruble has flipped to becoming the best backed currency. It's not easily proliferated, but it's backed by gold and oil. Mm. And you've gone from 150 rubles to a dollar to 54. This is the unspoken thing that the Western media aren't telling you about now. I've seen a couple of a couple <laughs> of reports on social media about the, the ruble being the, the best performing currency. Yeah, recently over the, over the last six months or so. Yeah. Um, so you just and, and again, that's just another another reason why, why you go. Well, hang on a minute. Those sanctions that we've we've made against Russia, they're actually helping them. Yeah. Yeah. So why would you do that unless yeah. it's deliberate? Yeah. It, it's absolutely. It's the only logical conclusion that you can come to. We've got a pantomime villain, villain that we've created, and it's got a Russian name. It's Sergey, uh, and I think they're going to get Sergey out. Um, we've had the, the the likely lads of the World Economic Forum come out, uh, and they've spoken of a Russian hack. And part of my thing is they're never going to own the fact that they need to take down the banking system. And my big message to everyone here and watching is, hey guys, you've got to watch out actually the banks will go down and they've all got this, well, we've got this deposit protection scheme. And I'm saying, you forget what bankers are like. Yeah. They give you a brolly when it's sunny and they take it away when it rains. What's your take on that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to back it? I don't trust, I don't trust uh, those, those promises. I, I really don't. There's so many broken promises in politics and banking that um, I, I, I wouldn't expect when the banks go down, I wouldn't expect that. Where are they going to get it from? No, they don't have it. They the key thing it. is that that whole deposit protection scheme was if an individual small bank went down, everyone else would carry a bit, the government would print a bit. It's not systemic. It's not if the entire system is going down. There is no, no chance. Absolutely. We've been predicting that probably to hide this event, they might get Sergey, the pantomime villain, to come out the closet and say, they've just done a global hack. You've all lost your bank balances. ATMs down, grid down, even mobile network down, panic, problem, reaction, solution. Yep. Hey, here's your CBDC. And oh, by the way, that affected your pensions, which was stuffed with government debt that was actually worthless. So here's your UBI, um, and it's only paid in CBDCs. Can we also attach our health passport with that? Have you had your last 
monkeypox booster number 14. And this is our scenario cost as a futurist. No, absolutely. And, and that, I think to me, is when people say, what's the, what's the end goal? What, why are they doing it? What are they doing it for? Um, and again, the only the logical conclusion is the control of everything that you can spend your hard-earned, not cash, but your hard-earned crypto or uh, digital currencies on. And if you are to say any single word that the government don't like, at the flick of a button, they can switch your money off. Absolutely. Now, that is a scary, scary thought. Uh, and that is not a world that anybody should be encouraging on. Uh, no. And that's why I, I, I try to encourage people to keep using cash as much as they possibly can, keep that alive. Um, because I think more. once the cash goes from society, well, I think it's game over. I do. I absolutely agree. I, it's almost like uh, the inverse Tony B. Liar. Uh, indicator that I have. Whatever he says, you invert. Uh, and it's a bit the same with the World Economic Forum. They're trying to push everyone digital. Why would they want to do that? You should go physical. We're putting our guys in silver, gold. Property, yes, without the leverage. My concern for people with property is that they do a the, that we're going to essentially have, the, as I mentioned, the George Soros pound, only it's going to be globalized. I'll show you why we think the dollar, despite it needing to fail, will first potentially spike because they always seek to be strong when a rival is coming. They did the same to the euro historically. Okay. When the euro was released, the euro yeah. fell from 160 to 0 0.8 on its release. This was around about 99, 2000. Uh, so it's kind of like a silverback beating yeah, yeah. its chest and showing it's still the alpha. Uh, it's a bit of a graying around the gills, never mind the back uh, type silverback. Uh, and of course, China and um, Russia are already moving far. The BRICS are already moving. So we're seeing a fragmentation. So. They are going to re react on rates more aggressively than the others, particularly a place like Japan that has 279% debt and an inverted demographic where everyone's a pensioner and, and bought the yeah. local debt. So what Japan has done is they keep printing to hold their debt up. Many people don't realize supply and demand economics 101. If there's a lot of something, it's not, it's not valuable. It's not valuable. <laughs> If we all had Bugatti Veyrons, no one, it's actually not special to yeah. see one at the, the supermarket. Uh, and this is, this is what's happening. So how these things held such value? Because it is a market manipulation. It's a, they use a phrase that sounds very technical and clever, yield curve control. What that actually means is we're controlling the interest rate. Well, how are you doing that? We're printing a lot more yen and buying the bejesus out to keep this debt up. Mm -hmm. And now what's happening is the cities of the world, much like George Soros did to the Bank of England, are stacking on the other side of that trade. And people said, well, it's a widow-maker trade. Many people have done it for many years. It's a widow-maker trade until it turns into a rainmaker trade. Uh, and eventually, it's like holding back the tide. You build a wall at the beach edge, eventually it falls. You know, No amount of sand stacking up at the back is going to stop that event from happening. So we've been aggressively long, the USD, JPY, and trading. And normal people can do this. I'm not trying to convert people into day traders with nine screens. Yeah. Just be positioned well. Currencies are going to, they, they're the new cryptos in terms of volatility. We've had a seven sigma move on the end, and it's starting, the secret is creeping out. Uh, and this is when the FX markets, they're the release valve for debt markets because you borrow money into existence. So it now becomes yeah. who borrowed, who's got more money borrowed into existence and what are you getting? Do you leave your money in a Japanese bank getting 0.2% yield and the currency devaluing or do you put it in an American treasury where you get 3.5 and the dollar's climbing? Well, so easy, if, you, if you have to choose those two, I'm not saying you should be in that choice. It's yeah. a Hobson's choice. Yeah. It's a bit like who's the least ugly in, uh, in, the, <laughs> in the leper colony. Um, but in that event, that's what's happening. And these are the financial ructions I wanted, to, I wanted the guys that are football fans, Matt Letitia fans to realize taking action is going to make you feel better, even if it's worthless action. As you mentioned, I'm an optimist and I'm a high energy guy, but what I'm saying is dystopian. But you need to hear it because it's realism. Yep. I'm man enough to see the wholeness of the truth. Go and study the history of Bolshevism in Russia, why these guys, uh, have what they did. And it's the great unspoken of, you know, Orthodox Christians were tortured in churches. They had their hands nailed onto altars and peeled the back of the skin off. Females had um, coals in their genitals. I'm talking about savagery. Uh, and that same generation 
is here to level the floors. There were conspiracies right here in London where they said, we want to own everything. We work people out. And they've essentially created a macro pump and dump scheme. And, and it's asset prices that, uh, that do it. Mm. What's your top action uh, tips, Matt, that you would say for the guys, definitely do the following. First of all, building wealth. Um, well, I mean, first of all, I, as I said, I'd encourage everyone to keep using cash. Yes. Uh, I think that's uh, incredibly important. I think it's also incredibly important to, to understand what's going on. Don't hide from it. Like you say, I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm a very positive person. But also, you've got to be a realist. Mm. And you've got to understand what's going on. Because until you accept what is happening and the dangers of what are happening, you're not going to do anything about it. Once that's you right. accept that there's some shit going on here that shouldn't really be going on, then you can go, okay, I know this is happening. So the next step from there is, what can I do? Yeah. And I think what we have to realize sometimes as well, that even, even you uh, as an individual, the smallest thing that you can change, you might not think that makes a huge amount of difference, but if a lot of people are doing a lot of small changes, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. We are a swarm of bees, uh, the shoal of shard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think keeping your, uh, keeping your energy up, I think is, yeah. is a good thing. So I, I've, I've consciously, when I'm, when I'm living my life, when I'm meeting people, I am consciously being upbeat and positive yes. and keeping my mood high. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think that that is how do you how do you maintain that personally? You, I, I'm a, I'm a generally happy, that way. yeah I'm a generally happy easygoing guy. I grew up on on a, on a tiny island, yeah, know, just a hundred couple hundred yards on the beach, yeah, uh, with a very it's a very laid back island, yeah, uh, and so I've always had that kind of persona, um, but that doesn't mean that I didn't have a, a drive and a desire underneath that to want to be a professional sportsman, yeah, so. Um, it is a combination of, of two of those things. Yeah. Um, and I think that was kind of what made me the footballer that I was, really. Yes. Because I was able to uh, have that high desire to be a professional sportsman, which a lot of people, a lot of people kind of don't, think, think. don't understand what it takes to get All the to layers. that level. Yeah. In the, you know, to that kind of that international level, the Premier League football level. Yeah. They don't understand. Uh, the mentality of the, the sacrifices and the mentality that it yeah. takes to beat off all those other people around you that are trying to get the same place as you're trying to get. Exactly. And you've got to go, no, I'm getting there. See you later. Yeah. So you have to have a, a certain type of mentality for that. And I think people uh, underestimate that sometimes. Yes. I think you're what I'd describe laid back, competitive, highly competitive, highly competitive and highly motivated uh, individual mm. um, and principled. I think, you know what if i said to all my guys pretend you have and i said this a year and a half ago now you have a three-year lease on life i'm telling you it, it's over at the end of three years that sounds like a bit of a morbid concept but actually go live like you know that only you don't have the cancer or the whatever in yeah, it absolutely. you all live every day in that manner and then if you played your cards right and done a decent job i'll show up and give you an extension to your contract much like a footballer yeah, yeah. and say good play nice absolutely. striking Go ahead, have another yeah, three years uh, and keep taking out of the universe. So there, was one, there was one thing when I was growing up. Um, um, I don't even know if my uncle realizes just how much of an impact this has had on my life. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I've even spoke to him about it. Um, but he said something in a conversation. It was just a flippant remark uh, mm. as a, me as a young kid growing up. Um, and he's, they'd be talking in the conversation. I just happened to be listening to the conversation. And he just turned around and he said, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Very good. And those words, and I was just, I, I must have been like 12 or something like that yeah. at that point. Yeah. And those words just stuck in my head. And to this day, I remind myself of that yeah. saying you know, as, as often as I possibly can. And that's what I've tried to do. Absolutely. And, and that's that why, time. And that's why um, when I've come under fire uh, with all the, the abuse that I've taken from the mainstream media, it's actually just 
water yeah. off and yeah. this water of the ducks back I don't yeah. I don't really care yeah. uh, and no, people, people well, actually more that. important it's validation that you're doing the right thing as the British bombers yeah, said absolutely if you're not taking flak you're not dropping the bombs in the right place that's exactly right yes the flak is always the heaviest when you're over the target hundred percent hundred percent no absolutely love that and choose your principles now particularly if you're our audience are going to be formative mainly male but to the woman absolutely on board for you choose your principles now and decide whatever comes my way I stand on this and uh, I push back against totalitarianism against those that's uh, I recognize the right of freedom of speech at the same day how's this for an ironical sort of political dichotomy and a statement on our times Tony Blair being put forward for a knighthood and mm -hmm. Julian Assange uh, almost being extradited to the USA Honestly. and fighting legal uh, after legal if those two things don't wake people up then <laughs> not sure anything would wait if that doesn't wake you up as a human being to go tony blair illegal war in iraq a million deaths on his conscience we're going to give him a knighthood julian assange brilliant investigative investig never mind the journalism. dr kelly part with him and campbell and oh how how and that's been swept on deeply the deeply dodge uh, that is, I've done a deep dive on that. I encourage others watching this. We've got too much to cover, but go and do a proper look at that. And I mean, even the lead singer of Radiohead, credit, credit to him, he wrote a song about mm. the ill doings. There's, there's a lot of good people out there. Sorry, Matt, carry yeah, on. No, no, that's exactly right. There are, there are a lot of good people out there. But then you've, got, you've got an investigative journalist who has just been persecuted to the point of nearly dying. Yeah. Well, where is our where's our morals in this country where's our democracy yeah you've got a, a man who is responsible his decisions were responsible for a, a million deaths an illegal war a war that he knew and personal illegal. enrichment on the side and corruption with the middle east uh, saudis you name it is in there and so he gets a knighthood now that to me now people are going oh that two series of conspiracy theories because he keeps coming up with all this stuff but if we can see that as human beings, what has gone on in Iraq, who was the perpetrators of that, what they knew before they went into that war. Six if we can see that, why can't the people who are giving out these nightlers, why can't they see that? Now, that said, my logical brain, which is, which is what I have, I have an incredibly rational, rational, logical yeah. brain. Yeah. Now, my only takeaway from that is, they must know. Yeah, they must know. We no, they know. do. And yet they've still given him a knighthood. So where does that put them in the whole chain of events? Yeah, self-serving. Are they complicit in this as well? Well, it's like the CEO remuneration committee in the top Fortune 500 that all the guys are on the other guys' uh, committee. Mm -hmm. And they, are one, they look after each other. So you have executive pay in the big American particularly. And it's like the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, and the drug people. Well, you, you work at um, Pfizer, you go to the FDA. Then you go back, it's like a rotating door. It's like spinning chairs. It's this is our guy. He just spins around. That's uh, what, that was one of, the, well, one of the other big things that I've kind of tried to impress upon people, um, is when you're listening to people talking on certain subjects, um, I think it's important to know where the conflicts of interest lie uh -oh. before before these people so i i, I how do they earn their when, money when do they when they go on television and do an interview and they just go oh this is such and such and he's going to tell you about this so what they really should do is go this is such and such this is where his finances have come from yeah this is who he's been backed by so if you're doing a if you're doing a research paper and you're doing a study on, on something you have to know who's funding that study to know that who's paid yeah what what do they want out of that study because yeah. scientists can give you any result they want from a from a bit of research depending on the people <laughs> that are paying them what they want to see from that research yeah. and science has been corrupted so uh, unbelievably my, i call it scientism now my, yeah my my faith in science my faith in politics medicine and my faith in medicine over these last two years has been obliterated to pieces i mean i i'm fortunate touch wood, i haven't had to go to the doctor in the last two years yeah. but if i had have got ill over the last two years i'm not sure i would have even wanted to go and see a gp no no because yeah. my confidence in them the way that they've behaved 
has completely gone. There are there are certain very brave doctors and scientists yeah, that have come out to be and said. spoken, and then they get castigated like I've been in the in the mainstream media, but they're still brave enough to speak up. Um, you know, and the Blair really government destroyed message. Wakefield, uh, the doctor who brought up the original MMR jabs, and he's now becoming a, a hero again, but an underground hero. Uh, following events because this is the, one of their key axes of attack. They literally want to be under your skin. Um, which brings me to our friend elongated muskiness. Um, I'm ashamed to say he went to school a mile from the boarding school I was in in Pretoria around about the same time. I'd love for a, a South African born and school guy to be this all arching hero but um, I think he smells this whole Neuralink chip in that what's your take on these created heroes for us um i'm very skeptical of anybody who has got that much money yeah um because it's <laughs> how do i put this it's especially it's accumulated easy, so quickly by the way it's not easy to become that wealthy so quickly mm. if they didn't if you weren't on a certain side yeah they wouldn't let you become that wealthy that quickly. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I, I'm very skeptical. Um, I don't. I don't get fooled easily with uh, with that kind of stuff. And uh, so I reserve judgment on the whole Twitter takeover, freedom of speech thing. Uh, always felt like uh, right from the start. Hence, so why you are a good point to mention Getter, Matt. G E T T R. Yes. So it's a Getter of uh, a. a Starlight, but they're only a year old. Um, yeah. They're a, a, a rival to Twitter. Uh, in fact, they've had more signups in the first year uh, than Twitter did in their first year. So, um, so I joined that platform in, in January. I do live streams on there um, yeah. where I, I speak to um, really interesting people. I had Ivor Cummins on this week. Yeah, uh, nice. Data around this. Don't miss it. Across Ivor. He's a, a, the man has got a brain the size of the moon. <laughs> uh, honestly, he's just he's an incredible. But it sounds like he has character too. He has truth. Character. That's the big problem with intellect. And he, without principle, he it's... has principles. He is he is a very principled person. He is a data guy, so yeah. he will only look at data. Uh, he everything that he Hard speaks science. of, he will have viewed the peer-reviewed papers on it. Uh, he would have done his due diligence, and he would not say anything that he cannot back up with raw data. Um, so it was, it was an incredibly informative uh, hour or so that I spent with him. Um, and it only entrenches that you're on the right track, aren't you, in terms of this. In the long way, I think it was Martin Luther King that said, and I'm going to cock this up, but he said the arc uh, of truth bends slowly, but in the end it always bends towards justice. No, um, absolutely. Play the long game. Uh, and I think that's right. I think the more, the more time passes, the more we're seeing you know, stuff that people were calling conspiracy theory uh, a couple validated. of years ago has been validated. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the problem that we have is that the stories have come out, they've been shot down as conspiracy theories, and that is in the, the mind of people who've gone. They don't actually then see the stories come out two years later, and they don't actually correlate the two events. So they can't go, oh, uh, oh, didn't they say that was a conspiracy theory two years ago? They don't do that because they just go, oh, that was a conspiracy theory two years ago, so I'll just ignore that. Yeah. Um, so you have to you have to be very careful um, that if a st when a story comes out and it's it's written off as a conspiracy theory, um, I, I I actually think they should it's, be called. It's almost proof. Conspiracy. It's like in politics, they say it's not official until it's been officially denied. Absolutely. Uh, it's neither true. Absolutely. <laughs> and, that's, and that's just where we've been in the last two years. It's just absolute crap. You know, the, you know one of the, the, the lab leak, the Hunter Biden laptop, all that kind of stuff, which was denied and, and oh, it's a Russian, uh, yeah. you know, a Russian hoax. And uh, you just go, oh my God, this is just how people can't see that they're being played by the mainstream yeah. media so badly is just yeah. frustrating at times. I think it's the scale. You and I apply the lot, what I re refer as the logic wall. You just keep saying, what's the logical point of this? Yeah. If that's a fact, what's the logic? And I keep knocking the walls down until you eventually get to a conclusion. It was my father who used to read me Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes. And he used to say, when you eliminate all other things that cannot be, no matter how extreme or how uh, insane, what is left is your, your answer, answer. and the scale of this is 
so vast that most people can't quantify that all these elements have been captured. And if I were one of these guys, I've often thought, how do I game theory if I'm one of these control structure elements? Well, the point is, you've got to control, if you want to control the world, but you want to do it subtly, you've got to control media. Yeah. That means you've got to control the, the, the music stars. I was watching yep. Glastonbury and it was all about yep. this Roe and Wade thing and this and that. And the previous mm -hmm. time it was BLM, which we have yet to touch on. Um, and, uh, you know, you look at rap music, you look at uh, the big corporates all going. I, I, I've, I've got a meetup. We were expecting 25, 30 people. We've got 70 coming to the pub. Uh, I'm going to drown the place. I had this pride flag that now has this new element being injected into it. I don't know if you've seen this map. And it's got the brown, the black, the pink, the white, and everything, and now it's trans. I almost feel sorry for the authentic gay people who just want to be left alone yeah, now yeah. because they've been infiltrated um, by this other agenda now, which is killing female sport. Uh, you know, you've got a mental issue if you're questioning whether you're an XX or an XY chromosome. I'm sorry, that's biological. <laughs> yeah. It's mental, it's nothing else. Um, give it some time, try get some treatment. If you want to mutilate your genitals uh, and pee sitting down instead of standing up or vice versa, you know, good luck, but I think you're making a mistake. But you're still free to make that choice. But the manner in which this is being rammed down us. I think it's, I think that's the biggest problem is the, is the way that we are being almost Forehead. forced into going, you will accept this. This is normal. Yeah. This is, this is like, and you will accept what we're telling you. Because if you, if you take that again, the logical step. So firstly, the, you know, we've, we've had, you know, uh, gays and, and, um, yeah. lesbian marriages. Um, yeah. uh, and we've, we've been conditioned to accept that. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't accept it, you're a bad person. Yeah. Um, and that's how they bring yeah. in all of these things. So they want you to 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 accept something. They will demonize you for not accepting it. Yeah. And make you look like you're a bad person if you don't accept this. Yeah. Now, when you go down that step, bit by bit by bit, what's the next bit? Uh, I, I think. And I'll tell you what I think. Mm. The next bit. And I, I, I hope, beyond all hope, that I'm wrong in this. Yeah. The next bit is they will try to normalise paedophilia. You were going to say exactly what I was going to say. I that's, know where this is going. That's the next logical step. Yeah. That's where they're going to go with Age it. Age of consent keeps getting chipped at on the one end. You're pushing these other interesting various new genders. It's blurring so many lines to eventually, literally, you can get to that political choice of um, black male favorite that you can't look past. What do people not see in the Epstein event? Mm -hmm. And what do you think has not really fully come out out well, of that story? Well, I mean, just say Maxwell. Maxwell. Yeah. How does she get 20 years yeah. for trafficking children, yeah. sex trafficking, and yet none of the people that she's trafficked those children to, to are, named. are named or investigated? Yeah. How, how, do people not, there? how do people not go, Oh, that's not right. Yeah. They just go, oh, well, yeah, she trapped children. She got 20 years. That's fine. It's all done there. And they go, we'll just wash our hands with that. Well, hang on a minute. Hang on. Stop right there. What about the rest of the people that are involved in it? <laughs> She's not the only one. Yeah. She's trapping them to somebody. Exactly. Why are they not being prosecuted? And the reason they're not being prosecuted is because they're high profile names who will have protection. Absolutely. And that's kept back as a blackmail that they always play the game. Um, one in the toilet, they'll throw one to the dogs every Absolutely. now and then to say, well, we did do so and so. You know, eventually, uh, our friend, what was his name? The pervert and the necrophiliac, uh, that was the seediest guy I ever saw on TV. Help me, uh, Matt. Jimmy Savile? That's the one. Seediest guy. I came to the UK and I looked at this guy. How did this guy get a media gig? He had this grey, greasy hair coming out of a V-neck t-shirt. He was as seedy as all hell. He stunk. You know, worse than Biden sniffing children. And, and it only came out after he's dead. But they'll throw a, a, a post-mortem bone Absolutely. to make it look like, um, you know, we, at least, you know, at least we, the, the truth they, outed. And they investigated him while he was alive. And the investigation was Sidebar. Brushed, brushed to the side. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, uh, I, I believe Keir Starmer was part of the CPS at, at that time. Look where oh, he is wow. Now. I um, didn't know that. I've so he was the head of the criminal prosecution service 
uh, he claims that he didn't have anything to do with the case. Now, I'm <laughs> sorry, but if you're the head of the CPS and there is a high profile, probably one of the most high profile individuals TV. in the country, biggest TV personality. Who frequents with Prince Charles and um, pictures Indeed. with Gordon Brown, Blair, just about everyone in its dog. How as the how as the head of that organization organization can you turn around and go, yeah, I didn't have anything to do with that, I didn't really know about it. Come on. Yeah. We were born yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So just back to solutions. Building wealth. What does a guy do that we're both fairly fortunate? I've got a, a good business, you're a, a spectacular sports star who's retired well, still gets good media gigs. We want to give them a shout out by who's who's who hasn't been scared and given you the sport? Dutch media, what's their name? Uh, no, uh, the um, Indonesian media company, yep. Mola, uh, who I've been working for for the last Thumbs up years. for Mola. Absolutely, they've been um, incredibly supportive of me and, and um, haven't uh, taken any notice of the uh, of the negative publicity the that the mainstream media have, uh, have decided to put on me. Um, but, you know, I'm good at my job. I, I, of course you are. I, I know what I'm on about. Um, and... They've been they've been great to me over the last couple of years. So big big thank you to Mola, um, and you know I I don't need loads more work if I'm yeah. honest. Yeah, uh, I'm quite happy with the work life balance that yeah. I have at the moment. I, I, yeah. I still love my sport. Yeah, uh, I love playing sport. Last night I was playing. Uh, is that an tennis. else, as in Ernie else? That is the else club. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, another South African of my golf heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you meet him ever? ever by I the did. Way? Yeah, I, did. I, I heard he's a nice guy. Do you know what? It was one of the uh, it was one of the, the nicest moments in my life, actually. Oh, really? Tell I, us. I caddied for my friend Richard Bland, yeah, yeah. Um, professional golfer, uh, yeah. who won the British Masters last year. Uh, coming to a little bit of controversy recently because he's joined the Live Tour. Yeah. Uh, and so he's come under a bit of fire. Um, support but, him so I was I was caddying for Richard uh, just after I retired from football um, and I caddied on the European tour yeah. and we were up at Loch Lomond uh, and Richard had just finished his second round I think it was and he and he said I'm going to go and hit some balls on the range you just come and watch so I stood behind Richard watching him hit these balls and uh, and in the next bay was my golf hero oh you're kidding Ernie that was so, the best thing so he ever did is, for you Ernie is watching is hitting these balls and I'm meant to be watching Richard hit his balls but I'm not I'm watching <laughs> His golf swing is just a dream. I heard the big easy. It's just a, a, an absolute dream. So, uh, so I'm, I'm stood there, I'm watching, watching Ernie and Richard finishes. Uh, and then Ernie finishes. I said to Richard, I said, Richard, so I've got a camera. I said, would you mind just taking a picture like, with me and Ernie? Because he's my golf hero. He went, yeah, no problem. So I walked up to Ernie and I said, uh, I said, Ernie, I said, hope you don't mind me interrupting. I said, would you mind? You know, I think you're a fantastic golfer. I said, would you mind if I had my picture taken with you? And he went, Nothing, you're a sure. fantastic he footballer. Said, he said, sure, Matt, no problem. He said, you weren't a bad footballer either. <laughs> and, and, I, and I looked at Richard and I went, he knows who I am. <laughs> Brilliant. Congratulations. one of the nicest moments yeah. of my, of my uh, life. Yeah, yeah. So good, good, good on him. And he, and he paid you, you tipped his hat your way as well. <laughs> awesome to hear, isn't it? Like, that's great. And it was lovely. About, about four months later, I was then uh, caddying again in Singapore yeah. uh, with Richard. Uh, and the day before the tournament, they had a pro-am. Yeah, and I was going to play in the prime in the afternoon with Darren Goff and Jeremy Guskett. Yeah, we had a, we had a, uh, David yeah, rugged, rugged other, guys. Yeah, so we had a we had a team of celebrities, <laughs> and um, and so in the morning we went out and watched a bit of the pro am. Yeah, and so we're stood on the, the side of this was 15th fairway, and Ernie's coming down the hole, and he hits his ball about 10 yards from where we stood. Yeah, and uh, so the, the guys go, oh, Ernie's coming. Ernie's ball was just in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so Ernie walks up to his ball, and as he walked up to it, he just looked across, and uh, he's gone, all right, Matt. <laughs> and the other lads looked at me and went, how do you know him? <laughs> I went, well, you know, we go back yeah, a long way. Right. Yeah, me and Ernie, <laughs> <laughs> down by the yard. <laughs> I'd love to even just to acknowledge yeah, the fact that yeah. I was there. And, uh, he remembered who you were. He remembered who I was. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got the impression he's been a nice guy uh, mm. all the way around and is pretty well liked. Yeah. yeah, that's a great story, and it was a nice <laughs> segue to break the tension of the coming dystopia. So here's what you do, guys. If it's coming, acknowledge it. Of course, you get a little bit of depression, and you go, oh, Jesus, really? Do we have to have a battle? The thing is, Matt, we're born, and we are creatures of our times. There were generations born in World War II. Absolutely. There were kids that fought in trenches and yep. didn't come home at 16, 17, and 18. These are your times. Be grateful for what you got. Take action and decide to be a leader and be a man of principle at your localized level. It could be just at your pub, uh, having just a connect, wee rant. Connect with people. Connect with yeah. people of a, of a like mind in your area. 
yeah. um, have support groups, um, uh, and you'll be amazed at, at what can come from conversations with people and what you can do and with different people's different ideas. Um, so I think it's it's really important that you, you kind of connect with people of a, a like mind. Also, with a male dominant audience, I want to say try bring the wives along without spooking them. And if you're a lady here, bring your husband along. I mean, everything in inverse. There's no genderism in this, but we're going to have a male dominant uh, audience. Don't terrorize them straight out the blocks. Mm. Get them on board. There's going to be flu food supply shortages I'm, I'm working on. They've been flagging this. I mean, it's not like we're making predictions. They're telling us. We're yeah. just repeating it. Yeah. Um, there's going to be probably energy-based. This is what I can see as a listen to the scenario class that could come. You and I have nice three, four-bedroom house here in the UK. They are already offering um, working class families, which they're trying to say poor families essentially, uh, payments for not using electricity at peak moments coming this winter. Uh, and I think, wow, that is such an unbelievable statement because they're killing about four birds with one stone. A, you're talking, it's a UVI by back door. So I'm straight away universal basic, basic game. You're yeah. paying somebody to not do anything. Then they're going to do, uh, if they reheat the pandemic of some variety, there'll be a flu element to it. Maybe we'll be all monkeys. I don't know which variety. And we should mock them, by the way. I love the memes and the mocking. They hate it. Dictators hate humor mocking, directed yeah, at them. Absolutely. And Britain, the one thing I will always say, we have the best humor in the world. Have a laugh at their expense. Mock them. And absolutely. That's, and that's also one of the things that's been attacked as well, is, oh. is the comedy. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that you, you're not allowed to laugh at anything anymore because somebody might be offended. How was Ricky that, Gervais gets a shout out, surely? Ricky Gervais, is, that, was, <laughs> the, that was just the funniest hour. I haven't laughed at a television program so much in absolute years. I thought it was genius, <laughs> yeah. the program that he did. He really stuck it to him. But the point is, he's not entirely joking, is he? Some of the, they say many a true word said in jest. Absolutely. Jet. This is the, the key thing. The, the great Shakespeare was almost, you know, he couldn't upset kings, but wrote stories and parables and narratives of it. We are a nation of that. Go and be who you are born to be. Mock them. Um, so, yeah, sorry, we got taken on a tangent there. I was like, yeah. what, were we, what were we even saying? Um, so here was the scenario cost. That's what I was going to say. So with this, they do UBI. They, they put you into shortage. They, they, they're signaling shortage that they intend. Even if they don't, maybe they will still enforce a shortage. Germany is definitely going to get it. Um, and at the same time, they create resentment because what will happen is you'll have a COVID-related death due to flu in a house that wasn't heated. And then they'll say, but Matt Letitia's house with four bedrooms consumes three times the energy and he can afford to pay as an ex-footballer. He killed your granny. You know, <laughs> uh, they'll, try, they'll try all of these divide and conquer. And this is another massive, yeah. massive message. The BLM thing, I don't want to go too deep dive on it, but there was nothing wrong with kick it out in the, the old thing. I hate anybody who boos any uh, person of color uh, uh, at a stadium. They're absolutely. absolute garbage. Absolutely. Uh, and they're, they're one out. My favorite player was John Barnes for Liverpool. Uh, yes. During that era, he was a magnificent footballer. I've just seen Sadio Mane sign out. I think what a shift he gave John us. John speaks very eloquently on the, the racism issues, actually. Yeah, um, worth a follow, John yeah. Barnes. Yes, indeed. Uh, divide and conquer. They're going to they're going to cut us up like crabs in a bucket to pull each other down. Don't fall for it. Don't don't fall for the black, the gender, the black versus white, the male versus Absolutely. female, the, all the other. The new, vaccinated against the, 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 the unvaccinated. Exactly. Exactly. Jeez. Have empathy for people that have been vaccinated. Yeah. Don't have contempt. The whole thing that you could have this aggressive stance where you say, oh, they're dead to me now. It's not going to serve no. you. You're talking you about people, that. you're that, sharing that, the world. That plays right into their hands. Exactly. So the divide and conquer stuff, you have to firstly acknowledge it yeah. and then ignore it. Yeah. So you do not do not fall for the psychological. It's a style. The, the psychological part of what's gone on the last two years has been quite incredible. And credit where credit is due. I mean, they're very good at it. Yeah. They're oh, very good at they're it. They're relentless. They are relentless. I mean, the amount of propaganda that was spewed. Well, this out is the country the of Bernays. Years is just unbelievable. Yeah. And they got a, a huge portion of the Switch it off. To do it. TV off, what, radio yeah. off, and whatever. That's what I did in April 2020 uh, yeah. because 
the news was just the most depressing thing to watch. Yeah. Uh, and it's done so intentionally. And so switch it off. Don't let that drag you down. Do you know what? I started to do a lot of switching off. I mean, apart from the post 9-11 and the, 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 the great financial crisis where I saw a lot of things that were orchestrated and intended for. But I, do you remember the Go Compare advert? I just thought you'd disrespect your audience so much to bludgeon them with that. And there wasn't any a, a, a malicious agenda. And I've just turned off all commercial messages. So now I have a premium Spotify. I listen to the tunes I want to do. I listen to podcasts I want to do. And TV is there for hooking up when I want to watch uh, Liverpool Southampton or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think sport is about the only thing I want. And quiz programs. I yeah, occasionally like quiz programs. Yeah, so, a little bit of a, trivia. Bit, bit of a quiz. I love a bit of trivia. Is Matt uh, Dawson still at it? Or they they retired? Uh, no, they they <laughs> they got they got elbowed. Yeah. Um, the, whole, the whole crew got elbowed at him, Tafel and Sue Barker. All oh, right, so they're freshened up there. So the, the whole question. It's not just you getting an elbow, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm alone in this world. Uh, you know, what, what can you do? So wealth creation. It's quite a hard one for people that have yet to manifest. But I would say the following. If you do the other things, you'll find a way. And maybe this is your calling. Maybe you have to say it. Listen, if you haven't got something that you're passionate about, be passionate about this. You'll be amazed in time how you will be able to monetize, build an audience, build a reference, go talk about it to people. But de-urbanizing, you're in a beautiful countryside. We're actually getting a nice sunny day out here, beautiful English summer, uh, getting close to your farmer, actually knowing your local plod because he might have to be an enforcement arm of the state yeah. and maybe keeping him wise to the world that he has a family and not losing his mind and that... I was in the military. It's all about compliance and following orders. Yeah. There comes a point. Do you remember the electric shock thing where they had they put someone who was screaming and they actually gave him electric shocks? And they were shocked at the number of people that continued to enact pain. That's There's awesome. no liability on you. Just keep giving next level up, next ah, yeah. next level. But but, but, but what about this? No liability on you. It. I'm instructing you to do it and you can't do it. You didn't make a moral point of principle to say, I will not participate in causing another man harm. And they were shocked how many people went along. Um, and this... Like 67 percent or something, it's crazy. Ridiculous experiment. Unbelievable. And this was very empowering for the dark state because they think yes. most people are weak-minded. Establish now and write down your principles. I do not do harm to others. I support freedom of speech. This is who I will. I will be hated for it. I'm a figment and a man of my times. I can take a leadership role. Yep. And you don't have to be a millionaire uh, to do it. You don't no, have to be a great not. footballer to do it. Absolutely not. I think freedom of speech is the, is the most important thing you can fight for. Uh, because once that goes, you, you are at the mercy of your yeah. government. Yeah. We do one thing, Matt, because I mean, we've scenario cast this even beyond this. We say, what if Britain falls? And despite your efforts, these guys have sewn up the game so well, it falls. And one of the things we do is around five flags. If you're a British passport holder, I'm sure, get another one, have a company that's in a different location, have a bank that's in a different location. Um, you ideally want to be the second passport is mexican you have a panamanian corporation you have a lot of your assets there but they are stored somewhere else you want to almost be and this is what they do unfortunately they all have foundations we set up foundations for our community members so that you don't pay a death tax if you die it, it gets into planning you say well i've got nothing really much to live you start now it's not once you're a millionaire that you, you can do it it's all in your name um you've got to have structures and there's legal ways of reducing the attack vector that is governments of all nation states and at the moment if you're a brit watching here because you love matt um you're a football fan you've got a british passport you've got a british address you've got a british energy supplier probably um and you pay tax to britain what you need is some diversification you need some arbitrage and that's some of the things we get into it's not that kind of a discussion today but how do you feel if britain falls what would you do matt um that's a good question. Um, I think what I what I would do is I think I would buy a motorhome. Yeah. And not have a fixed abode. Yeah, that's helpful. It is a very good idea. 
I, I hired an RV and went all the way to Cornwall in it. At, uh, I remember hitting those speed bumps and the cutlery drawer <laughs> smashing open. And I thought a flipping guy had come right through the back of me. Uh, and I enjoyed it. And I did it for that reason, being mobile. Um, buy yourself a Barbados uh, passport and, or something else. There are a lot of mechanisms to do it. But I, I think, unfortunately, it's time to start thinking. And even that, maybe later you'll talk to us on that point. Because I think everybody needs to start thinking about that. Fight now. Because you, if we all run, there's no resistance. No. But you've also got to set up plans in terms of um, you just can't be totally beholden to one captured government. And no. it doesn't matter if it's Labour or Tory. No, They're the, both captured, aren't they? That's the worst bit about it is the, the two-party system. They're, they're just some, Somebody described it the other week. And Bipolar. That, that, it was just a perfect description. They, somebody just said, they are just two cheeks of the same arse. Exactly. And either way, you're in the shit. It, it, exactly. <laughs> you're just, there, there's just no difference between them. In fact, right. in fact, probably under Starmer and Labour, we'd have probably been even worse off in terms of the length of lockdowns and the yeah. severity of lockdowns. In terms of how you were speaking, he was he was to the more, more extreme, extreme side. More extreme, yeah. There was yeah. nobody, there was not a single person in Parliament voicing an opinion in the other direction to what we went How about that Ferguson guy and his models with oh, umpteen million? Don't start me on <laughs> Honestly. But, but, Has he been knighted yet? I yeah, yeah, he yeah. He should, yeah, yeah, should be knighted. He should be Sir Ferguson now. Jesus Christ. Could you be any more wrong in your predictions over, not just once or twice, this is like over 20 years of yeah. your predictions which come nowhere near to happening, and yet still, the media still give him airtime to... Well, it's like Alistair Campbell. I'm always, why do you let this guy give an opinion? This is captured content. Absolutely. He is totally captured. He knows what he's doing. He's going high side every time. He'll tweak the variables that everything's on the high side. You get lies, lies, and statistics. So when you're doing a complex model with lots of variables, you just put each one on max and Absolutely. you get an insane number at the bottom. Absolutely. Um, worst case scenario on each of the variables, it compounds, it, it parabolizes, it's exponent, it exponents, and then you just get a pile of garbage and you sell it. And you say, well, look, I have a model for it and I got that. You've just tweaked all the variables for it. It's just incredible how he has managed to come out of this, you know, even breaking all the lockdown rules and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, for a girlfriend. And, 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 and a few months later, uh, he just sneaks back into the media. He starts doing a little bit of yeah. Guardian. You know, the Guardian will, will interview yeah. him because obviously he's on that side. Um, and then you know the BBC will have him back on yeah. and just try to feed him back in gradually. And you just think, hang on a minute. Yeah, the rehabilitation. This guy's totally discredited. Yeah. In professionally and morally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yet here he is on television trying to tell us. Well, I'd say the exact same Absolutely. about Tony Blair and Alistair Absolutely. Campbell. Absolutely. Totally discredited morally, definitely, uh, on the umpteenth level, just dishonest to the core, media managers, uh, and they get recycled. So the BBC is not your friend, guys. Neither Absolutely. is Sky, for that matter. So all your mainstream medias, turn them off, catch your game, wait till, they, wait till they're done kneeling before you switch it on, um, because actually... That's a Bolshevik funded. You did the deep dive. Tell us your take on the the, the organisational well, side of BLM. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't comfortable uh, with that situation when when it all kicked off after George Floyd. And, um, and his, can I jump in? Sorry to interrupt your flow. He's not Martin Luther King. You're talking not, about uh, a, a guy who did part time porn, uh, the debt collecting. They called him the landlord because he always collects um, and. Uh, probably swallowed his stash while he was being arrested. No, I'm not defending a cop or, or someone dying no, on his shift either. But not. he was in the process of passing fraudulent money, uh, all of this. This is not this is Martin not Luther King. This is not a saint we were talking about. And um, and then I kind of had a look into, into what the um, Black Lives Matter stood for in mm. terms of what they, were, what they were trying to do. And I wasn't comfortable with that. Um, it wasn't how I saw things. Uh, and then when I was... You know, a minute before I was about to go on air um, on Soccer Saturday, we were given the badge and told to told to put it on. The door stopped you literally. Literally, she had no time. Seconds before we were going going on air, and I was and I was like, well, I'm not really comfortable with that. And and I was told it's in your best interests that you put it on. Hmm. And I was like, blimey. So I, I put it on, but at the end of the show, 
uh, I, I took it off and I went to the producer and I said, look, I said, I don't feel comfortable wearing this badge mm. and I won't be wearing it again. Mm. Uh, you, you dropped that on me at the last second. I think that was out of order. I said, I'm quite happy to wear the Kick It Out uh, yep. badge, which has been going for years as a uh, uh, in the Premier League that they've supported. Yep. Uh, the Kick Out races racism out of football uh, I would be quite happy to wear that um, and that that kind of <laughs> didn't really go down very well no. uh, with people um, but again you know as time has gone on we've seen what's happened with where the money that was raised for that organization goes um, you know villas for the owners <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, it's just I just feel validated that I was that I was right to take that stance. Yeah. Um, and I've always said, if if I was put in that same position again, and I, and I've been asked, would you make the same decisions, knowing what the consequences were going to be in terms of losing jobs and, and things like that, then a hundred percent I would still do the same thing. I, ha I have to. Um, morally, it was it, for me, it was the right thing to do. I 100% agree with it, and I credit you with doing that to the detriment of your own potential employment and earnings. Um, Quite frankly, given what, <laughs> given the propaganda that was coming out of Sky News, the Sky News rooms, um, it's almost a relief to me when, when actually they said, you're sacked, you, yeah. you know, you, you're done, there's no work for you here anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> and although it, it, you know, it's a little bit of a shock and you know, nobody likes losing their job yeah. uh, because I enjoyed my job. Yeah. You know, I, I was reasonably good at it. I uh, had a good connection with the guys that I worked with. Um, but despite all of that, it was actually a bit of a relief that I didn't yeah. have to work for that organization. Well, you were uh, big. You were too big for the people that were around you. You were a cuckoo in a nest of sparrows. Um, I was going to say, who of the footy, because we'll have a lot of footy fans here and the commentators, do you think are a little bit less woke at are probably on it? And I've also got a little bit of a concern question about do you know one of them is actually on the world the young world economic forum um, members? I don't know if you know. Yeah, yes. Oh yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> yes. I did see that name crop up when I was looking through because uh, I, I went and have a wander through their, their mm. website. And, yeah. Um, and that was that was one of the big things early on for me actually, because I, I went in in March of 2020. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've been seeing a, a couple of things. I didn't really know it. I didn't know a huge amount about the world, to be honest. I'd, I'd gone through the first 50 years of my life um, being a footballer, yeah. sport, obsessed with sport my yeah. whole life, never really taken an interest in politics, never really taken an interest in what, in what the government was doing, quite frankly. Um, uh, and as long as you know, it was quite a selfish attitude to take, because as long as it wasn't affecting me, um, I was quite happy um, and I just when when the whole pandemic thing started and I, and I just thought this there's something not quite right about this yeah and I went and have a look at that that world economic forum that's when I first heard about the great reset yeah uh, and the plans that they had and when people started calling it a conspiracy theory <laughs> I was like well what? How can it be a conspiracy theory? On their website, <laughs> That's <only>. they explain <laughs> everything and yeah. in, in, in detail that you cannot imagine. Yeah. The detail that has gone into it, this whole web of what they're going to control and how they're going to do it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so that, I think that's what made me go, why are people calling this a conspiracy theory? I just looked at that last week and it's all there in black and white. They've written it. They're telling you what their plans are. And yet you've got the mainstream media going, it's a, it's a, it's, it's just a conspiracy theory. And then he writes a book. Klaus writes a book called The Great Reset. And you go, is that still a conspiracy yeah. theory? He's written a book about it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all on the website. How many more? Yeah. How many more times do they have to tell you about it before you realize what's going this on? This is the duality gaslighting. They advance one agenda while downplaying it. And then yeah, when so it happens, they say, well, we always told you. We told you. <laughs> and that's how they, you just that's, that's how they alleviate, that's how they alleviate their conscience. Yeah. In, in, in other because words, they, they, they feel like because they've told you about it and you've done nothing about it, yep. you've consented. And to, everybody to right happen. now that is not actively reacting, meeting up with groups and setting and getting organized, you are actually, through your inactivity, 
accepting. That's the so that's key how thing. They take it. That's how they take it. That's that's exactly how um, they take it. And this is the great the great uh, threat. I remember they had a, a, an English arm of the World Economic Forum, and he said, "Oh, I'm just a lowly Norwich supporter, and no, Klaus is a bit eccentric." And he did no debunking. He did no debunking. He just chit chatted. People, are, oh, conspiracy theorists can make of it what we want. You know, we're just a talk shop bringing people together. And I said, well, you sure seem to be throwing out a lot of documents, yeah. and a lot of it seems to be turning out just like you're saying. Yeah, but the best predictions I can make is just to go visit and read the site. So if if people if they're talking about a Russian hack, by the way, you can be sure Britain will be part of the banks that will be closed. And I hope you're getting. The deposit protection scheme will not be there for you. It will be on a scale so vast. And by stripping of your cash, you will be powerless. It will be the problem. They will then have IMF, UN, World Economic Forum, Bilderberg type get together, meets G8, G10, G12, whatever they want to call them. And they'll say, oh, we've been working night and day for you for a solution. You owe us. We're having sleepless nights. And, and then just universal da, 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 basic income. 100%. <laughs> Um, they've just rolled it out in Wales, haven't they? They have. They're doing, in Wales. They're doing, I think it's over a thousand, that's 1600 or 1200. 1600. 1600 uh, quid. So all these things are absolutely coming. And you might say, but who doesn't want to have free money? It's not free money. You're paying for it in the overall expansion of that money. Your buying power is going down. That's why you're having inflation. There's no such thing as a free lunch. And it'll come with compliance criteria the minute it's launched uh, and they will control you. Once direct government, we're all being taught, uh, submitted into being statist employees and we're all on the same flat salary, that is a technological Bolshevik communism. When you're not through your own efforts and endeavors earning um, your wealth, then you are the dead weight. So only people that should be happy with this is the bottom 15% that like the idea of living off other people. And let me tell you, even them, their quality of life is going to go much further down than they think. Because yeah. uh, I've been to post-Soviet Union. I've been to the Ukraine post-Soviet Union. I've seen the buildings. I've got a partner who's Russian, and the stores were empty. And what do they do? They do price controls. That's what's going to come next. And then the shelves will be empty. And yeah. then you'll buy it for four times the price on a black market or at a, at a car boot sale. And then they'll say, well, that's not in the inflation numbers. Inflation's not so bad. Mm -hmm. You can still buy bread for X amount. You just go to the shop and there's none of it. Yeah. Somebody's bought it's all the toilet bad. rolls. <laughs> yeah. It is amazing. So the, the, the get organized, build wealth, de-urbanize, build wealth, find something of value that you can do for others that you'll be recognized for. Initially, build audience. It doesn't monetize straight away, but it will in time. Um, De-urbanize, I think they plan to put us all in cities. What's your take on that? Um, I think there's uh, already some pilot schemes, isn't there? Smart cities. Uh, yeah. Going up. I think Neom in Saudi is one. I think Dundee. Oh, wow. In Scotland is one as well. I'm pretty That's sure time. I saw that uh, as I drive, drove through it. Um, so there is... Is this Some distance kind of from the food supply? In other words, when you urbanize, you totally rely on the supermarket chain. There's no farmer stalls and other. Do you think they're putting, they're trying to remove us of the gifts because there's a Nestle CEO who says you don't even own the water that falls on your roof. <laughs> um, I, what I think uh, they're trying to do is force us to not eat healthily. Yeah, everything processed. So everything will be processed uh, and if they Agreed. do everything that can be processed and your your only source of food is processed, then it's very easy then if they want to, very easy at source, if they wish to, and people who go, oh, you're mad, people, people aren't that crazy, people aren't that evil, right? If they wanted to poison people, yeah. they wanted to kill off, a, you know, there's too many people in the world, they need to kill off a few, yeah. and everyone's eating processed food. And quite easy then at source just to stick a bit of something in it. Yeah. Do away with a few people. Um, population. Population control. The yes. amount of people that come out, oh, there's too many people in the world. Now, many of you will have bought that. Uh, and there are a lot of people in the world. I'm not How saying... You know, this is, see, this is, this is, this is questions that I, I like to ask, <laughs> right? They're going, oh, there's 7.8 billion people in the world, right? How do we know that's true? How do we know that that is true? Because people well, just well, go, oh, there's 7.8 billion. We flew a they've drone. Had, they've had a census and, and they've had a census. Well, how accurate are those censuses? Yeah. Who fills it? Who, how do we know who fills in the censuses? Yeah. And, and 
who is taking in the information of those censuses yeah. and the people who control that information can tell you whatever number they want. Yeah. You can't go and find out. No. I can't go and find out. No, it's not very it's not auditable. No. Yeah. So they could make up any number yeah. that they want. So And even if we took that number and we stood shoulder to shoulder, you know, we'd fit in a small state like Kansas Absolutely. in America. I think that's what there's people, more chickens that, in the planet what, than there are humans. That's what people don't understand, uh, I think, is that they go, Oh, there's seven point eight billion people in the world. Uh, but then they don't take into consideration just how big the world is. Yeah. Now you you fly on an aeroplane. Yeah. Over any country in the world, and look down. Try and Namibia. see how much <laughs> land there is that doesn't have houses Assault. on it. Yeah. And go for miles without seeing a single building. Yeah. So no. um, all that stuff. I just. Yeah. And and for those that are saying, yeah, but look at the damage we do. It's the corporations. The biggest and worst damage done in Latin America was the oil companies. They went and destroyed the Amazon. Um, when somebody stopped it and nationalized and said, it's our oil, we're throwing out uh, uh, Exxon, a Rockefeller uh, from Standard Oil History subsidiary, uh, the guy's plane fell out of the sky shortly afterwards. And then Exxon were back in after a new president came. And these guys secure the right to pollute. So let's be clear, Germany decommissioned three nuclear plants on account of Fukushima. Now, Fukushima is a deep dive rabbit hole. I don't know if you've done that one. No, I haven't. No, it's very, very Tell interesting. I will. Uh, but they've, nuclear is the cleanest that we have of the non-greens. And they're restarting coal fire. So how's that green? And this is the place where we're putting in carbon taxes as well. This is for entire grid. Your car doesn't matter in terms of that decision. I mean, there were nine big cruise liners that were burning the greasiest distill at the bottom of the barrel, that's literally the grease, the yeah. foulest and the dirtiest, that were putting out more carbon than the bulk of the European uh, cars. So actually, your personal footprint, you do have, and you should minimize it, because we all want to be efficient. But your personal footprint, in terms of the macro big decisions they're making, is not nearly as much significance, and they are holding you to a standard that they are not being held to, as we've seen with the masks and everything else. All this stuff as well. Um, yeah, two of the biggest countries in the world, China and India. Yeah. What are they what are they doing about their carbon emissions? Yeah, well, the biggest producers. They're the workshop of the world. And they do nothing about everything it. you buy comes from there. And it, it's just just it's crackers. What's going on in the world? Honestly, <laughs> just it, it seems also there's a flavour. There's particularly a Western access to this. This is. The ones that have had it so good, it's your time to have it so bad. Who's actually in Russia, he is promoting childbirth, he is giving subsidies, he is helping with home, um, he wants citizen increase. And that's a big pivot. Mm. And I'm almost thinking maybe a Russian passport isn't such a bad idea. Crimea is not that bad this time of year. Because actually, in economic terms, I have more, in terms of trend, they're coming off a much lower base. In terms of trend, our trend is awful. We've topped out and we're going yeah. down. It's definitely a lot higher than some of these other places. But I prefer trend. I prefer each day things get better, not each day things get worse. And I can adapt, especially if you go there right now with big money and you're on the right side of the trend. I was long in the property market when I first came over in the UK. Everyone was saying, no, the 90s crash. I could see they were globalizing and they were going to have low interest rates and it was going to be. We set up a property business. Uh, sometimes you want to be on the right trend. And I feel we're on the wrong half of the globe now, mm. almost, in terms of trend. Yeah. What's your take on that? No, I think that's a, a, a very moot point, to be honest with you. Um, what I've seen uh, from, and it seems to be the countries that were, were the worst with, is it the five eyes they call them? So oh, yeah. Israel's Canada, second Australia, largest. Uh, America, us, yeah. and yeah. yeah. And it's just like, it just seems like the worst bits were in all these countries that have this little alliance together yeah. and they're all kind of working in conjunction with each other. Yeah. Um, and I find it all a little bit, uh, a little bit contrived. Um, yeah. English, Anglo-Saxon, white man, bad. There's a bit of a theme in all of that, isn't there? There is indeed. Uh, and it's the whole, it's the whole divide and conquer thing again. Yeah. Where they just pick on, pick on a demographic, uh, and they will just go after them. Yeah. Um, and, I wanted to show a chart before we finish. I'll just do that because we started to do it just for the, the guys that are for the first time, they're seeing something a little bit financial. Stay with us. It's going to be interesting. And it's uh, kind of confirms what um, what I've called as a, as a major trend change. 
the debt markets, a short expl explanation of the debt markets. Basically, you never hear about these markets. They don't want you to know about these markets. These are markets that are behind every money, every government borrows. Uh, I'm going to put that on log scale just to illustrate something. Um, the last big inflation period, you might remember gold, and we suggest people actually hold precious metals. If they want you digital, hold physical. And for us, that's precious metals. It holds value in times when you need insurance. It's insurance against bad decisions. And boy, are we going to make some. This is essentially the yields, and it shows interest rates, how it went down on 10 years debt. So every day you have to pay off at the end of the 10 years, give the capital back, and they'll pay a rate of interest during the period. So it's kind of like a mortgage, only it's government that has borrowed from pension funds, from citizens, investment companies. The events of COVID, this is the collapse in the yield that occurred. That was, wow, shock and horror, make lending super, super cheap. It dropped to 0.3. Now the value of debt has an inverse relationship. So the value of debt was doing exactly the opposite during this period. It's been one of the best investments, bonds. Remember what I said about supply. There's tons of it. They're keeping it up. It's artificial. And in the same way they're keeping that up, it's our assessment they've been keeping the price of gold and silver down. Gold is the canary in the gold mine, if you'll excuse uh, the pun. So this final capitulation in technical analysis, they say, when you end a trend, just like in the dot-com boom, you have a blow-off. Everybody has to buy it. They don't even care the price. They're sick of hearing from their mates that have made money on pets.com, boo.com. They charge in and they buy. It doesn't matter. The dumb money arrives, in essence. You have a blow-off and then you have a real serious crash and it's a trend reversal. In the same way, bear markets end with a final capitulation. Everyone goes, oh, you can't. This was the capitulation in yields. We are back. This was uh, at the 2008 squeeze where you broke down. We call that a... We've got a special pattern for that, but that points to a breakdown. It's a continuation breakdown, and then you had the final capitulation. As we mentioned, we call for single-digit oil during that period, uh, and then the subsequent rebound. This is a reversal. You can see how extreme this move was on the log scale. So this is log scale is a percentage. How much did it change by percent? And the snapback, the harder you fall down and overact to the downside, there's a natural geometry to this, the harder you react back to the upside. We've already seen that in the oil, and I will also show you the oil uh, for your charts 101. But this is back above a key level of resistance, that it was resistance all the way from the great financial crisis and the lows of 2011, um, when they essentially have been on Irma Thurman getting the adrenaline needle plunged in by John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. That is how the economy is. It's a zombie, and it was kept alive with artificially low rates. If you thought if inflation was 0.3%, I've got a, you know, I've got a bridge to sell you in San Francisco somewhere. Um, so this is a macro reversal in debt. In short, debt is going to devalue. Most people's pensions are, have bonds in them and don't realize it. UK guys, get a self-invested personal pension, ensure you have no debt markets in it. Preferably uh, gold shares uh, would be a great time. Um, now the oil markets, I'll show you this as well, and I'll show you the big collapse and how it subsequently has pumped, just so that you can see something visual because people are uh, visual on that. Let's get, uh, we've get, in, in this side of the world, it's UK, the Brent is more significant than WTI, but they both macro markets. This was the WTI. Actually, that's the crazy wick that went to zero on the future. So I will leave that one. It's it's a very difficult chart to even quantify. Um, if I just delog it, uh, which is just putting it in a normal level, this was a falling wedge uh, essentially, which is a squeeze that eventually sees an upside break. So we shorted up here in and around the 60s expecting uh, a single digit run, which occurred on WTI, not on the Brent chart, you can see just below. And note after that huge capitulation, how hard you have pumped. And the problem is they'll keep telling you peak inflation, just like they said, transitory inflation earlier. Yeah. Peak inflation is the new transitory inflation, the new lie. The problem is oil, 118 UK, 112 on WTI. Until those numbers come back to 60s, you're not having peak inflation. You're going to keep uh, you're going to keep adding on that inflation number. It's not going to go significantly down unless you have a year-on-year -year comparison, and we're a year from now, and it's still at the same price. Then the year-on-year -year will be down, but you'll still be at these high levels, yeah. if that makes sense. So my warning is debt is failing. That means the banks fail because the banks are a debt system. Yeah. Plus you have the World Economic Forum saying, guys, you might get hacked. 
Well, how convenient to have a little mm -hmm. hack. Just before the COVID, they had a massive repo market problems. The banks weren't lending to each other. This was in September and October. We picked this up. And that was also encouraging us that there was major issues. Then, boom, you have this major pandemic. They switch it off and they pump six or seven trillion. Who do you think got that money? Who do you think got that money? We shut the world system down and we papered over some cracks. Yeah. So the financial game is dovetailing with the geopolitical and the health agenda. It's all controlled. It's that big. Yeah. It truly is that big. And that's and, what they say about uh, uh, when they say about lies. You know, you've got more chance of getting away with the big lie. Big lie. Yeah. You've got more chance. Goebbels, yeah. And that's very much where it is. Um, Matt, thank you so much for your time. We've had a good long chat. I want to give you a chance. Please just shout out how people engage with you. First of all, your talking circuit. If there's anyone who wants you on the talking circuit. Yeah, I do some after dinner speaking, which um, I, I talk about um, my career, my growing up in, in Guernsey a little bit, my my football career and then my pundit career after that um, and then I do some TV work um, and I am on social media on, on Getter which my handle is at Matt 7 same as what I am uh, on the other is that two s's or one let's get it right uh, two s's yeah yeah yep. Matt Lattice 7 yeah um, and um, I'm also on Twitter if you see me on any other stuff it's not me I just do yep. Getter uh, and occasionally I'm winding down my Twitter, to be honest. Uh, it's not a platform that I particularly so like. So over to Getter, guys, uh, at Matt Latis, two S's in there, seven, his footballing number. American, Australian, guys that don't know Matt from a footballing point of view, let me tell you, he's a man and person of principle and character. You're going to hear truth bombs being dropped all over the place, has a massive uh, following here in the UK and beyond, in fairness. And I've, yeah, my live streams on, on Getter have, uh, have been going really well. We've got some good guests coming up. Um, Dr. Tess Laurie, I have uh, this uh, coming Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Um, and so looking forward to that. And uh, Majid Nawaz is coming on shortly. Um, Carol McGiffin. So getting uh, a lot of guys uh, who are similar minded. Not, yeah. not all similar, uh, um, not all have the same thoughts about everything. Uh, and we have discussions and take questions from the from the guys that are listening in, so uh, it's good fun. Excellent. Matthew, uh, let's say thank you so much uh, for giving me time. I have a special request. Uh, if the Scousers come down Southampton, I'll pay my way. Can we head <laughs> over to see uh, the, the likes of Darwin and see if he's any good and you give me your take? No problem. I look forward to that. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers, Francis. All the best. Guys, how are you? I'm here to tell you that I had an amazing interview with a man of principle, Matt Letitia. That's right. Uh, Matt is a uh, fabulous uh, and stand-up guy. He was, you'll see the interview uh, that's about to follow. Enjoy it. Please hit the like and share button, by the way. Uh, I'm here to give you a prelude, a uh, couple of key points. People of principle do certain things. One of the things that stood out about Matt's footballing uh, career is that he said he got given a break by Southampton Football Club. And he felt permanently grateful for the fact that they gave him his opportunity. When the power changed and he was pursued by Tottenham and Liverpool uh, and others, deep down, he felt, I love the fans. They've backed me every time. This club has looked after me and backed me throughout my career. Yes, I might get more England caps if I was with a big name uh, side scoring these worldy goals. But the truth of the matter is, I'm happy here, and these people are the ones that have looked after me. Um, that's a key and a rare principle. And it's no surprise that on this great uh, reset agenda of the World Economic Forum, by the way, we had the reset sniper long before in terms of branding than they did. But anyway, I've got a couple of slide points that I'm going to prelude here that I want you to watch for in the interview that I'm going to run through super quick on what you can do to protect yourself against the overarching, overreaching state. So let's get straight in it, and then you can go jump in straight with the interview uh, after. By the way, I will also show these uh, at the end so that you can see it. And if you are registering on the video details below, we will send these slides to you. Okay, so uh, follow the instructions at the end. Um, and if you provide an email uh, and follow the instructions, you'll be able to get these. It's a non advisory view on what my take is. And um, Matt's was pretty similar uh, in many aspects, but it's not reflective necessarily of his views or anybody else's uh, apart from it. So 
in terms of what we're going to discuss, use cash as much as possible. It's one of the first thing Matt said, you know, it's untracked, no data footprints, keeps pressure on banks to maintain the cash infrastructure. If we all just start pivoting cards, 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 all sorts of convenience, you will be stuck in the digital world. Every uh, card payment you made is tracked, who you were, where you were, what to place, what time, how much, where it was bought, that data is harvested, it becomes a product. Keep much higher levels of personal cash at home because grid down, is going to potentially come. It's one of the scenarios. It doesn't mean it has to happen. It can happen. That means ATMs down, mobile networks down, problem, reaction, solution, major drama, problem with food supplies, lots of, of you know looting, things of that nature. It's useful to have cash at home, higher levels than normal. The people that have cash will also be able to buy when others are desperate, things that they won't be able to buy because the cash is shut. Gold and silver, physical investments, unfinanced. By the way, one of our partners here, four people that are in the UK and broader, far broader, does dollar cost averaging. You can send 20, 25 pound a month and buy a single uh, silver ounce each month and accumulate a tube. Uh, so go ahead and do that. You can reduce your taxes, many legal ways to reduce the taxes. We are funding a beast that is uh, waging war upon us. Uh, find out about that on support at the market sniper or better still book a call to chat more about the reset uh, items. Uh, my partners, uh, Zenia Litvin, uh, awesome, awesome. Uh, on top of this, done all our structuring for our business. Be tax efficient. And also bear in mind, you will need offshore uh, entities, something not in your country. And we'll come back to that on the five flags. And you also should start to think about alternative domiciles or not spending as much time. If you can't, you've got kids. Some people are on the road. Some people are doing uh, kids schooling with other communities, uh, with uh, friends. As much this is going immensely at the moment. Uh, I respect not everybody can make commitments like that. You might just be waking up. This sounds hardcore. It sounds extreme. Build wealth. You must look to build wealth. Our entire branding is based around building wealth in reset times. Building wealth in reset times. This is who we are. Major moves, major volatility is occurring. Not everybody wants to be a day trader on nine screens. That's not what we do. However, we do take positions with long-term views, with stop losses, managed losses, and take profits. And we are seeing the currency markets turn into the new crypto markets in terms of volatility. And we have strong views of what's going on. Subscribe to the Market Sniper, uh, the Crypto Sniper, and the Reset Sniper on YouTube and Odyssey for the, the Reset Sniper because of bans. Um, also, have a look at your pensions. Get out of government debt. It is not an investment you want to hold in our view. Can we be wrong? Yes, potentially. But money is borrowed into existence. Uh, as the debt market uh, collapses, money is also dying. Follow our content to learn more what I mean. If you have a, a private pension, consider getting it into SIP, consider getting it out of equities and bonds. We are going to have underperformance in these hypervaluated classes for a sustained period. Yes, it's true. And it could affect property. See some of our videos also on property prices because of the financial engineering. Interest rate super spike. You could have an interest rate super spike that throws you out of your properties. Remember the George Soros breaking of the Bank of England? We could have a globalized version of that, not just for the Brits, but for Eurozone, et cetera, et cetera, where everything falls apart and interest rates have to spike and debt devalues immensely. At that point, we'll go into a major IMF crisis, et cetera. You'll know it when it happens, a Bretton Woods Mark II moment. The pound, or because we're talking a lot to a UK audience with Matt Letitia, but all our dollar friends, our Aussie dollar friends, uh, you know, Western countries, South Africa, etc., all of them, uh, your domestic currency crash. How will you be affected if that happens? Uh, you're going to have money in a bank. Banks A could collapse and uh, take away your wealth and bail in. Bail in laws have been written. B, your currencies. Get rural. Make sure you have supply chain to farmers. Uh, get out of the urban social unrest areas, developing self-reliance, grow food, befriend your local farmer, know, uh, become as independent as possible or uh, a lighter user of energy by having alternative sources. Know your local copper for the right reasons. Uh, volunteer, listen and gather strategic intel from them. Things will be coming down the tube. 
grid down preparedness that's energy mobility how you move around battery-based scooters all sorts of things uh cars motorcycles etc when there's lots of crowds lots of people water electricity food supply chain Solutions would be things like candles, CB or ham radio handsets so that you can communicate in mobile networks down rainwater harvesters. A lot of this sounds quite prepper and extreme. Better to be prepared. Taking action is mental health. Let's hope we never have to use any of this. Diesel gens, home battery packs, rat packs, as we call them, uh, from the military. Uh, community, build community, become a local informal leader. This is what we're going to be talking about a little bit amongst uh, on that. That should be however, by the way. Keep personal plans are confidential in terms of where you're burying the gold and silver. Home defense, how will you protect if rioters come to the door? They see you prepped, you're panicking less. They want to know what you got. They want to beg, borrow, steal. They are desperate. They're starving. You've got to watch out for a potential and this is the zombie apocalypse scenario of social unrest and people going door to door, looking, foraging for anything that they need. They're suffering. Crypto, uh, important trading crypto, building wealth through it. It's crashing at the moment, but will it rise again? How you should do it? It's not after you've made a million dollars, a million pounds, a million whatevers that you should start thinking, mm, I should get a tax structure. It's too late. Talk to us about that on support at themarketsniper.com. Mental health. This is a psyop on Western world, uh, particularly citizens. Avoid the pharma support like the Prozacs and the Citalopram's of this world. Sleep well, exercise, eat well, rise early, play music that uplifts, focus on taking action, inspiring others, dance, outdoors, vitamin D, especially in the UK. 95% of UK citizens are vitamin D deficient. Avoid excessive alcohol and recreational drugs. Um, so keep yourself fit and strong. Prepare for an obstacle course, like you're having to do an obstacle course and you're in the army stand on integrity and principle these are times you aren't going to control what's going to be going down out there guys this is big but what you can determine is how you choose to react to it you will either react in panic and fear and their biggest product is panic and fear and getting you to then respond as they want you to do or you can say i'll be a man of principle i'll be a beacon of calm i'll be prepared i'll be a localized leader and we will push back against challenges to our freedom that is the main justice of it you can contact us on support at the market sniper for structures foundations and corporations by the way tony blair uh oh dear and clintons they use foundations to protect their wealth we have to copy our enemies five flag development how you can have passports from different nations uh corporations bank accounts in different locations arbitrage the system at the moment many of you will be uk citizens uk passport uk bank account uk based business or job uh or put in the country or nature of this. How can you develop that you're a man of many, a coat of many colors, a man of many places, and that you have options when the lockdowns come back again?